Welcome back. Game two just around the corner of our third series of the day. If you're just joining us, we've had two teams advance through. No spoilers right now. You can go and check out who's gone through yourself in your own good time, as we are appreciative of people around the world in different time zones right now. But if you are tuned in with us right now live, this is game number two's draft just ahead of us. Manessi on the verge of going through to the semi-final of the upper bracket. Just got to get past Optic in game two. And if Optic can return back to what they used to be playing in the group stage, that might be a little bit harder this time around. Yeah, as long as they... I think if they can play some more, a little bit more aggressively rather than so responsive, that would probably be the key for me. Mm. Do you want them to, to play Maneski at their own game? Because no one else has been able to do that apart from Virtus Pro so far. I think you kind of have to. Like, maneski has been... They've just been up on the up and up. They've been playing this, this super fast-paced Dota and the itemization. Everything is just on point from every single one of their players. Like In that last game, I think there was only there was only one mistake they had in the entire game when they died bottom, like just overcommitting a little bit. Other than that, the game was flawless. So Yeah, uh, it's something we saw at the start of the year, Winter, was they would often go into those fights, but there wouldn't just be one of them per game. There would be three or four of those in mm. a game, and they'd end up losing them. So that's something that's changed as well. They've got a little bit more uh, discipline, I guess you could say. Yep. Uh, Does that come from their coaching? Does it come from some internal chatter? Where's that come from? Uh, I think I think a lot of it has to come uh, from from the coach. I, I find it difficult for for the team to change so much suddenly. It's mm. most definitely gonna a lot of credit given to the coach. Uh, Seventy one. He's from what I know that he's a very strict person. Mm. If he wants something for you, he's gonna get it from you, and there's no other way around. There's no shortcuts. You have to listen to him. Right. Otherwise, he'll just you know just leave and he doesn't want to do anything. Yeah, that's right. what they've been. That's what they were like telling me too. They're like, yeah, we've been playing like we've been playing Dota nonstop pretty much for the last like two weeks. We've had like no time breaks because seventy one won't, won't give us any any time off. Yeah, is that is that typical, Jack, of of top end coaches in China? And um, discipline. It's it's usually not strict to that extent. Um, I think seventy one's been known for you know a lot of these some kind of policies like uh, hey like. No take handphone away, policy, Take away right? the phone yeah. for like a month before a tournament. Um, mm. You know, you're kind of not allowed to, to leave or like not allowed to see like uh, your significant others or anything like that. So um, it's it's different. It's different. Mm. Some coaches are just more about, they're more about either helping with the draft or keeping morale high. And so, you know, it's like somebody else that you can kind of hang out with to relieve some of the pressure mm. from a captain. And some are kind of like uh, a bit more like you, it's my way or the highway type of thing. Yeah, uh, much, mm. much across the uh, the entire landscape right now. And with still evolving the coach role mm -hmm. to a large degree. And as Jack Riley pointed out, not just in China, but everywhere, the coach is almost unique in every lineup. There's no mm. two coaches in a similar vein, is there? No, I don't I don't think so. I think it's like it's really dependent on what the team what the team lacks in a way. Like if you really need somebody who's just like your your lifestyle coach in a way, or if you need someone that's just gonna be like the, the drafting coach. Like Bulba is probably more so the drafting. We see like when Blitz used to be for Liquid, he was more like the lifestyle coach, just kinda like making the players feel more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, he's much more the strategical mm -hmm. uh, part of that that team. Uh, as we head into draft number two, Winter, what what do you want, Optic? Did you, do you want to see them go back to what they were doing in the group stage? Do you want to see something different? Do you want to see something more run at you? What do, what do you want to see from them? Priorities. More priority on the laning phase. I, th I think they cannot underestimate how strong Mineski is at, at the Landing phase, they need to be able to draft supports. Like I, I mentioned, the witch doctor. When, when you see the prophet, that's like kind of like the bet one of the better supports to go for. It. You have to avoid trying to be too greedy about about things because Mineski is going to punish you, as we saw from game number one. So mm. they need better lanes. Yeah. Uh, what, does, what does that start with? Do they go back to the AA? The thing is, A is not great against prophet. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons why they didn't go for the A right. open, even though yeah. I think they, they have got banned gone. second phase as yeah, well. Yeah, they they had uh, the opportunity to do it, but maybe they banned maybe they banned the profit. I and think you ban the profit. Yeah. Ban, ban the profit, profit. Take the A. Take the A. I was thinking that. Yep. Mm. That's definitely going back towards uh, a more comfort area. I mean, the hero's just been looking pretty ridiculous at this tournament, right? I think I've been seeing Nature's Profit win majority of the games that it's being drafted now because it's got all that versatility. It applies so much pressure on your draft. And there we, we see like the buybacks as well playing a huge role. So Prophet is one of those heroes that can abuse that a lot. And you don't have like the penalty anymore, right? Too. Mm. So it's like your buybacks aren't as costly, and it's been Rana's support in a lot of these instances. So it's not like it's that detrimental to your net worth. Mm, wait. So Mineski is first pick again, and Optics read in again. Five so er everything's the same. Remaining. Same. Do the do the same bands though. It's, it looks like an optic has now having to take out both of the new heroes. While Mineski. Radiant team ban. Yeah, slightly different bands. Switch it up a bit. 
Now they can ban the Razor earlier, because they banned the Razor in the, what, the fourth slot last time? Or the fifth slot, I think it was. And we're talking about the Nature's Profit earlier. It's uh, been played 14 times during DAC. It has a 64.3% win rate. Oh, that's, that's really, that's really, really high. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's very high. That's yeah. ex with the comparable with the Sand King, at least one a couple of days ago. And you've got to yeah, choose what dropped off a little bit. He did. I forget what Minuski banned the start of last game, but yeah, now you've got a choice between Chen or Nature's Profit that you're letting through. Oh, yeah, by the not banning it. On there it is. The razor. So adjustments. Can Stronger lanes once more. is probably the biggest thing for Optic, just to deal with this <coughs> rotations. Mm, maybe King DK with Stalker? I don't know. Mm. The Sand King has 37 picks so far, which is way ahead of everything else. Ten Five seconds. clear of Gyro, and it's 54.05% win rate. It started to lose a lot the more on the main stage. It's dropped off, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the pick is fine, though. They might go with a Witch Doctor instead. Mm -hmm. um, they could go for an Underlord early on, because you take that away from, from this pairing with Nature's Prophet that we've seen Liquid run. Um, again, defends your towers. Gives you some clear... Uh, it helps you match the mobility as well with uh, team-wide mobility once your ult mm -hmm. comes online. So sanking Witch Doctor if they want to adjust the lanes. Certainly shouldn't be sanking Jakiro this time around. I would be very surprised remaining. if it's the same opening. Five seconds remaining. Witch Doctor is like the only position five that can think of that can... <laughs> Lane, lane okay against uh, the Prophet early on. Like most of the position five heroes just, just struggle. You, you, you can't fight him during the early game. You just can't. It's like Witch Doctor, D yeah, oh, they can just go for DK maybe early. Are they actually just going to take a Lush? Okay. All right. Two of the first three picks aren't exactly the same. But the Lush does give them like more flexibility in, in the draft because you... You can still move your things around, because if you pick the witch doctors, like the witch doctors, definitely going to be a five. So yes, Lash can be a five, can be a mid. I mean, this you have no idea where anything. Or it could be on optic five right now. It could be that remaining. could be your four or five. That could be your mid and your off laner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of. It's probably a difference ambiguity. from the last draft, right? They might have felt that they got baited into overcommitting into that, and the Mineski just runs it as support, and it just it just gives them it opens them up to to some serious weaknesses that uh, without providing the counter that they want. So Mineski could just... I mean, this game, we're probably going to see lots of pipes being built up again. Mm. And we see Lush and Sand King picked up. And same opener for Mineski. And Optic's probably going to ban... Uh, they ban o did they ban OD and Nyx last time? Yes, I think they did. Yeah, Mineski, what, they banned Tower Blade and... Uh, they, banned, they, had to, they banned the Razor the last time in the fifth. Did, so yeah. I don't... What Dyer other option could they have? Back. Oh, they banned the Night Stalker instead this time. That mm. was that was the pick that I was thinking that they might go for yeah. in the last hand. Radiant the Night Stalker pick. plus... Uh, mm -hmm. They moved <laughs> the Brood up in priority. <laughs> Just in they're, case. Does that mean they're going to grab a Keeper here? Possibly. Yeah, because Night Stalker is a uh, Keeper pick. counter. The Underlord. The Underlord. I wanted this. I wanted them to do this the last game yeah. when it's I saw the DK push Nature's Prophet first two picks because it's just very good versus both of them. You match the split push, your percent damage is incredible versus Dragon Knight. Ooh. Oh, this time the Rubik's not banned. Mm, so. That was what was banned last time, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice take that one out. Oh yeah, they, I think they last banned the Nyx, right? I think Optic banned Rubik and OD in the in the uh, fourth fifth last time. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got a remaining. a plethora of spells. Indeed. Five seconds remaining. Lots of fun stuff for Rubik to use. Mm -hmm. So right now they're they're gonna have to decide if they're gonna run this lash as a support, or they're just gonna pick another support and let the lash go mid. Mm. I mean, we, we saw like one or two games. Uh, was uh, one was from Misery and the other was from Cuckoo. The 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 lash pick and either position five can be something that uh. Uh, works well. Maybe um, they could look to run like some kind of aggro because they see a Rubik Sanking already. Lash. Sanking Lash. Oh, TNC ran an aggro lane with a. Yeah. It was Sanking Lash as well, I think. And like aggro, the guy, we also saw um, Liquid, they picked the Underlord and they actually laned it versus Dragon Knight, which is a pretty that's good the, matchup. Uh, that's the best lane. And VP yeah. understood that they couldn't let uh, Dunderlord became fair. They, they, used dropped, the so they brought the Disruptor. Yeah, yeah, they brought the supports to gank him. It's like if Underlord gets fair, it's usually against this kind of heroes, it's like a free, free game for. For the team that has him. Yeah. Hmm. 
And he doesn't really like say if he meets the DK in the mid lane. Uh, you don't really want to go there as the prophet. Prophet, I, I don't feel like you want to like go there and just zone him. You, I don't. I don't think even if you run a support prophet, you can do too much to him. Uh, the game VP sent the support. It was a disruptor. He just like sat on the high ground with the the like the, the, the thunder and just zone him out. Because otherwise, the underlord would be really fat in this kind of matchup, which is something that you have to not want happen if you're Mineski. That's excusing a lot of time. It's a key junction because they they more or less have to decide what is this lash going to do and is it going to be a good idea to have it as a support. Mm. Hmm. So this could be the... Is hmm. everything still open? They can still switch everything around? Yep. I mean, they... Yeah. It they, is have, looking they have at least another lane or another player that can play all four of those heroes right Ten now. Yeah. It is looking like Sanking and Lush are probably going to be the supports, but we are not Five certain. Seconds remaining. It's very unusual for them to pick a support last as well. Mm -hmm. so very uh, I'm assuming it's like Pycats. L LGD does that as well. Um, they leave uh, their like, position yeah. four or five but last. Tick, it's very unusual. Mm. Um, and Peter drafts. PPD drafts are generally not. Team I mean, back. bring for life steal. Right, right, choose not to go that way. Again. <coughs> Pretty similar draft. Yeah. Just replacing the what the Venge instead of that the Rubik instead of the Venge. Optic has a much like more all rounded lineup this time. Mm -hmm. mm. Seventy one looks real relaxed right now. He's got his feet perched up and everything. <laughs> Five seconds. It's quite happy in there, isn't it? <laughs> Not sure Peter's going to approve of the uh, the foot marks on his desk. Last picks Dyer that could be back. good for Mineski. Not sure if they're going to want to run the Prophet again as a support, or they're going to do a core. Mm. Last time at, at this junction, I recommended like a Night Stalker or Spirit. This, team this time... Radiant team pick. Mm. <laughs> Certainly a pattern again. Everything's the same. Mineski's running like the same draft. Wow. So strong lanes. And some stealable items this time around as well. Just to make it a bit harder. Hmm. So they're just trying to Ten tank up right really now versus like the ma heavy magic damage that Optic is running at the moment. And they have a lot of sustain. We saw that coming into play. I think Kyle was pointing it out a bunch when they were going for the high ground siege. These pipes and there's the Abaddon keeping everybody topped off. And it's podcast hero last. Hero. All right. So, Lesh sanking. Yeah, the sank support. Yeah, those are the supports, the sanking Lesh. Hmm. More food for thought. More of the same as far as Manescu is concerned, but with a slight upgrade potentially as well in the form of the Rubik. This time Draft it's. is done. Hmm. This time it's a lot stronger lanes coming out from Optic. Better lanes, potentially. Yeah. Potentially. Wintown, which way? Mm. You gotta start with me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I agree with Yanis. I think Optic has a much better lane setup this time, and if the support Furion doesn't bully the lane, I generally feel the hero doesn't do much later. So I'm gonna go with Optic this time. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Optic as well this time as well. Right. Yep. Yeah, I agree. This draft looks a lot better for Optic Lawless exposed as well. Um, even if they're behind the lanes, I feel like they can hold a little better and they have mm. more options, especially with the scaling on Luna. So I'm going with Optic this game. Yeah, I really wanted the Underlord in the last game. So this, like, when they pick it here, it makes a lot, big world of a difference when they're versus that DK and HS Prophet. Mm. Okay, clean sweep from our panel members. They all believe Optic have got it right at the second time of asking. Which way is it going to go as we head back to the arena with Mineski on the verge of taking a 2-0 sweep. Let's find out whether they can do just that. Maneski and all the Maneski fans would absolutely love that. If they can go 2-0 and propel themselves into the top six, it's the dream. Indeed. It's the absolute dream. And it looks like their dream is a very similar dream. This is a recurring dream with one small change. Yep. Like they've, uh, they've pulled in the Rubik as opposed to VS. Yep, and I actually think it makes their draft better considering the lineup against them. You have an Underlord, a Sand King, a Lesh, and a Luna. It is a dream Rubik game, and I actually think the key for Mineski is going to be to ensure that Ninja Boogie doesn't get into that five Rubik tranquils, no items, because his mm -hmm. hero is so key to their victory. 
And I'm, I, I kind of want to see how Optic go. So we, mm. let, let's, let's talk about their draft because we didn't really break it down well enough mm. in game one until we realized all the things that were wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, how do we look this game? You were mentioning like Underlord is actually a really great pickup yeah. uh, as we're going through the draft. Um, first off, Mineski had priority this game. Optic had it in the first game. Optic is choosing Radiant. Mineski is choosing first pick, which is why you see them on the same sides and had the same selection priority this game. In addition, the Underlord, and this is why the Rubik is so important, Underlord is God in this game. You have no real answer, and you just do so much damage to all the cores of Mineski, and he solves the big flaw in their draft, which was no tank. Mm -hmm. Gotta have a tank. Gotta have this map mobility, this wave clear. It's an excellent hero, but if Rubik gets powerful enough, when, once you steal that wave of fire, you're, you're just so strong. But if you just have boots, you don't have arcanes, you can't spam it, shove lanes, you just fall off. Well, he's going to be able to have the bottom lane at least, so uh, it's going to be laning with PPD supporting the Shrak up on the top lane, going to sync up with PyCat on the northern side. CC and C will head towards the middle lane. We'll have a one-on-one -on -one battle with a DK. Um, looks like Mushi as well as Rubik. Uh, Ninja Boogie settling themselves up on that top lane, and they managed to at least get the Sentry Ward that was blocking the camp. And that leaves our final lane down the bottom, 33 and Zai going against Jabs as Nature's Prophet, taunt all you want. He's syncing up once again with Abaddon, and is, is this a better matchup? We saw just how heavily the Nature's Prophet as well as Abaddon just wrecked this lane. Mm. How does Underlord and SK fag up against it? Like, is, it, is it better? Much better. Um, Underlord has a lot more ability to last hit, and you, you actually will probably win this lane. And the key is that eventually the Sand King can leave and then go help his mid lane and his top lane, where you have a lot of kill potential. Yeah, that was actually one of the things which uh, we were talking about before during the second series, talking about how Underlord should win almost every melee versus melee matchup. Uh, but that's where I kind of want to see the influence of Jabs, too. Mm -hmm. Like, Jabs going to try and harass out Underlord, but you got double Mango yeah. on 33. This is 12.4 regeneration when he's munching on a Tango. Yeah, I, I think they'll be fine down here. The Prophet harass is much... It, it's really his level one where he's strongest. He starts the game with Orb of Venom and these four trees, and if he can't zone you completely and really secure the lane, it's not oh. the same power level. Pick up on top. PPD being pulled back in. It's a homing missile and flat cannon only, but the control time will be enough until Zai! Burrow strikes in one more attack, Mushi! Oh, love the flak. Has one more attack that can reach PPD and gives the safe lane of Bineski yep. first blood. Not to mention forcing that rotation of the SK. You see a lot of inexperienced gyro players skilling their Q or their rocket at level one. When you get this flak, you get to harass both enemies in your lane and push so that they're able to get that kill because they already have a double wave thanks to the creep push on that second flak. So you you suggest Rocket Barrage if you're going like a one a one on however many safe it's, lane. Exactly. If you can chase them down and kill them, then by all means go for your Q. But in this game, there's a lush sanking. That's really never going to happen. You got to play the War of Attrition, harass them, set up with a lift into a creep wave. Mm -hmm. Oh, bottom lane 33 is going to have a little bit more harassment time to deal with. His uh, aura is going down a little bit more, but this is now with levels on the baton, so he's got that curse available. He actually shielded the range creep, uh, hoping that damage will come out to 33, and well, 33 will TP back to the tier one tower. Mm. And this is that pressure that can happen, the yeah. King pushing, pulling out a little bit earlier, but he's trying to make this top lane work for, yep. minute, for uh, Optic. Yeah, once again, oh, the courier mid. Uh-oh, jabs. Jabs. The taunts, too. That is so demoralizing, <laughs> especially when you're already down one game in a, a three-game series. Like, ah, oh, that's crippling to your self-esteem. Yeah, they were doing it in game one, too. <laughs> like, they were, they were all spamming their taunts. It's just a shame it didn't have the extra, like, the Pangolier taunt, which oh, is even right. more douchey. The, like, the, it's so douchey. The taunt's only, like, that's like 10%. It's getting dunked on, a.k.a. your courier <laughs> getting killed. That really hurts. I believe it's also auto-triggered. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. So uh, he, he may not try. He may not be trying to be yeah. that Jax way. Jax is on point. He also blocked the easy camp again using a tree. He has not warded that camp, but rather blocked it every time with just good micro. And that is why you see once again, ice, ice, ice. Perfect lane control. Very difficult for Underlord here because Abaddon mm -hmm. is one of the best heroes at just chasing you down to do continuous damage. Yep. But he, the advantage was the fact yeah. that 33 actually did find 
yep. that uh, that farm early on. So he's got a lot more CS than you had from PyCat in the early stages uh, of game one. But Ice 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 will now start to skyrocket. He's got yep. a he's got a zero one two build. He wants to harass. He wants to yep. slow him down and buy more time with the Orb of Venom combination yep. of jabs to make it impossible for Underlord to move. But that is exactly what I was going to say. And it makes the lane almost unwinnable. Every single as long as they have lane control, they just click him, and there's he, nothing he can do. Yeah, but at least he's not a morph lane, and he can farm the jungle, <laughs> not just sit there and attack it for 60 oh, damage. They're going to try and battle for this room, but here comes Jabs. He's got a couple of trees to work with, and the numbers are in favor of Mineski. Not to mention that rocket barrage damage. Zai so low. There's no mana for Flat Cannon just yet, but Mushi, now he's got it available. He's not going to push it. Not up that hill, not while he's so low. And Ninja Boogie doesn't really have much more to give either. Yep. It's a good game. I, I, the, the drafts are a lot more even this game. I'm favoring Mineski simply because they've been playing so well, and momentum is a very underrated, not just in sport, but in esports, because when you have confidence in Dota, you're playing that one or two seconds faster, and you're making moves that other teams are going to be too afraid to act upon. And Mineski right now, they... They got oh. balls of steel. They have a double damage rune onto Jab Zai. No sandstorm points means all that extra damage is enough to find the kill. The Observ Ward that's about to time out for Optic, it's it gave almost enough vision. Oh, they actually get a D water too just in the last couple of seconds. So yeah, sure, take the extra hundred. Uh, but it, it only scanned them the second they got to the ramp area. The second the trees came up, they didn't see the profit and they didn't back off in time. Yeah. And you check out bottom lane, it's just Underlord just They're getting clicked. He has no TP right now. Uh, okay, that's problematic because Ice 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 will be very happy to run that down. 33 into the trees. He's acting like he's got a TP, but he cuts through with a Quelling Blade. He's gone rogue and Jabs is on the hunt. It's just it's just so intelligent by Ice. He's just keeping lane control. Uh, and, and what do you do? Like, yeah. if the lane was in the Underlord's tower, this would be a totally different matchup. But He's just going to farm safely until he gets this Helm of the Dominator and then start to heavily pressure the tower, just like he did last game. Well, top lane, Fire Strike is out. Mushi, permanent control. Ninja Boogie gets a pick up. Mushi, one shot, just Rocket Mirage. He's got space, elusive beam. He's still alive on 15 HP. You have the Caustic Finale. He'll fairy fire and survive. And it's Zai, the one who dies from all of this. Such good play. I did Ninja Boogie actually run straight through as well to make sure there wasn't going to be like that that higher point of damage? Like he he ran through. He had he had three options and he took the hardest one on the far side. I, I, what do you mean? Yeah, can, can we watch that again? I'd love to watch that fight again if productions if productions currently listening. But because uh, I think he stopped Pycat from getting two loose and beams off. Oh, oh, with the block. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, think he might have. I think it might have been like just a hair on cooldown. I am not sure. But obviously, he's thinking ahead, whether mm -hmm. or not it actually saved his core. Mid lane, CC and C opted to go for the max tree throw build, which is, is really just for lane dominating, and he's actually losing to the Dragon Knight. It's, it's a trade, actually. We'll call it a trade, but mm -hmm. it, it's troublesome because this means his burst damage, like, he won't actually be able to rotate for quite some time because all he's going to be able to do is just farm and push lanes. They're going to have a crack at bottom. Yep. Ice 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 has the borrowed time triggered off. Uh, you know Nature's Prophet's going to be ready to TP. Doesn't have trees to create just yet, so much, not much point, but when Rubik, Ninja Boogie, wraps him from behind, this is now a dead 33. He has TP available, but he cannot use it. Not when he's in range of telekinesis. Backed into the terrain line and then brought down. Jabs the man to claim the kill. Yep. And with the catapult still alive, they can pressure into the tower. Yep. And Mineski playing a very, like, we saw EG's profit with a lot of success in the earlier stages of this tournament. Yep. It got banned first every game from then on out. <laughs> and Mineski's saying, you know, they're not the only guys that can utilize this. And it seems to be incredibly strong right now. And Jabs, it might just be Jabs. I have no idea. But he's 2 0 2. He's got a courier kill. He's just, he's just crushing the game. I'm wondering who you really want to ban. As far as like like optics get bans, like they took out Pangalier, Tiny was yeah. in the ban in their first round. Mm -hmm. uh, Chen, Rubik, Nyx, OD. It was very circumstantial bans. Like what could actually make Mineski's lineup work even better? But they picked mm -hmm. crack like four out of the five heroes they had from game one again. Yep. And once again, you see Ninja Boogie placing some really nice wards in the mid lane. One behind the tower again. You know, they're forcing TPs the down. SK is coming to the bottom lane. He's 
Mm, getting body blocked up slightly by Ooh. his own Trigans, maybe with a rotation of CC and C, but you've still got shields available. Ice 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 puts it onto Jam so they can fight. Moon's also done his rotation. Zai has to hide inside the Sandstorm. It's some half decent damage, but it's a level one. Yep. I say half decent, it's a quarter decent damage. They get the kill onto Tiny. He was meant to be their big player, the one who was keeping yep. up with the DK. Now the pressure just turns from the Tier 2 tower on bottom Dude, to the Tier 1 tower in mid. The, the coolest thing is the concepts the supports are playing with, they all understand. You have a Raindrop and a Wand, no boots on Rubik, and you have an Orb of Venom and Urn and a Blightstone now on the Furion, and he has no boots. They're not playing to chase people down. They're going to do exactly what they just did, stand still, auto attack, cast their spells, and trust that the DK and the Abaddon will be there in time to save them and help support. They get a kill, they pressure tower. If you look bottom, once again, there's now Jab just hitting this guy in the face. He's forcing a yep. TP by himself. Wow, he actually forces the Dark Rift too. 33. He's taking no chances. He's expecting so much more behind it, but in this case, yeah. it was a bluff. Like, you thought he, he had a full house, but really, he had a pair of twos. Yeah, and that... If there was no, there was no better example for me to show you the confidence levels that both these teams are playing with. Because Optic's playing scared, and Mineski's going for the throat. Yep. They are being so efficient across all items they require for these fights. And then they understand the position timing too. So drum of, Drums is being built up over on Moon. You've got a Medallion again being one of these mm. first items from Nature's Prophet after he's already got the urn. So a very similar style of, uh, of build. Mm -hmm. The, we'll say it's a very different game from the previous one because the tiny Underlord are strength heroes. Yep. They take a lot longer to kill. Mineski can't just outplay Optic around the map and cast their spells to win a fight. If they overcommit and they get hit by a pit into a huge queue from Underlord with a Luna ulti connecting, they can lose heroes and then the Luna can look to take over the game. But they are in a very good position. They just got to translate this lead into objectives. Well, Optic are trying to actually get an objective on top. They smoke two heroes up, PPD and CC yep. and C, but it's uh, Moon pressure onto that mid tower which has now forced fortification and cnc to break his smoke ice 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 the call down they're trying to contest the stack on top mushi in the neighborhood as uh zion pine can okay that's some decent damage the shield pops Zai, he takes so much damage they can oh. turn onto the eclipse but pike has just being soloed up i say soloed there's three heroes dealing with him while jabs and mushi push he's, even harder he's dead they brought everybody up and you're right zai's gonna go down jabs gets a double kill the urn with a final tick. And another tower to fall. Uh, and it... 23 you getting, getting deja vu, Toby? It, it, it definitely feels like deja vu, except Optic had a kill, I believe, in game one. It's 8-0 in favor of Mineski right now. Yep, and their map movement. The key thing is that both of the lanes, mid and Ice. bottom, were pushed before that. I love your confidence, but without borrowed time and without any of your teammates are ne near you, I don't know if this really <laughs> works. And he actually gets killed by his own Sada. CC and C tossing back the dominated Sada. That is overconfidence. But let's have a look. So this is the uh, this is nothing. We'll move on. The key there. Bot the lanes are pushed. Now Gyro comes out of top. They get the objective top. Everyone from Optic forced to that area. And all of a sudden, Mushi with no mana is free to just f push out this bottom wave. This is the third he's going to kill. And he can just continue. Look at Sand King on his ward rotating over. No fear now, and it just makes Optic continue to run in circles around the map while Mineski can then just get a tower, mm -hmm. continue to accelerate. Oh, Baden's going to hold up the mid lane. CCNC was trying to force that up a little bit more. And at least Zai is getting some space. Okay, let's let's have a second crack at this one. So yeah. it all begins it with a stack contest from Optic. And all, and then the Sanking Sun. You look at the damage output. The, the Fury and Ult hits both. The Luna's just dead. And all of a sudden, the Urn Charge onto the Sand King is enough to kill him. And you can just see how much damage Mineski can output in just this span of a 10-second fight. And Optic just doesn't have that same damage output unless they use three or four heroes stunlocking somebody in an Underlord queue. Well, they're going to use three heroes in the mid. Avalanche able to connect to start with. There's the Underlord and the Toss. But it's the worst target to go on, the one with borrowed time. And look bottom. Mushi's still down here hanging out. He just finished a Yasha. He just uh, didn't he just finish drums like two, three minutes ago? No, he skipped drums. He actually skipped the drums. Yeah, okay. They, they, the DK went is going them instead. So Mineski mm. not wanting to double up on drums. An excellent item, but the value is significantly decreased if you end up buying two of them. Yep. Uh Profit once again, medallion or no boots, but he bought a wind lace because he's gonna go for that spirit vessel again. And that, that item Ooh. is just so big. It kills the Underlord. It is the, it's much like Morphling. It crushes Tiny just in the damage out, with the damage output. And Luna doesn't really like it either. 
But basically, it's great item. Yep. I thought that thing was meant to be nerfed. Actually, it was nerfed slightly. It just makes it do magic damage instead of uh, health removal, yep. which is actually better for Mineski in this game because they have the amp aura from Rubik. Well, they don't have it just yet, but when he gets some extra levels, yeah, it will synergize perfectly. Mm -hmm. But Optic, they're hiding in the trees on the top. Zai is hoping he can use the Fog of War to get initiation, but they're not obliging here, Mineski. No aggressive pushing. They're letting Mushi farm up the bottom. Oh. The DK went rogue into the jungle. He now does have those drums available. Mid lane. Ice 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 looking to chase down 33 underneath the tower. That slow is doing work. So is Ninja Boogie. Pick him up. Toss him back down again. End up dropping down the pit. Ninja Boogie. Well, okay. Where's your efficiency, man? Steal an ability. Yeah, I was about to say, please. <laughs> he had the ability to get Firestorm. <laughs> That's like, he's just a support, you know? He's got to make sure Jabs has more room to farm. You don't want to take away Our first critical player. mistake of Vanessa. Yeah. You'll all go downhill yeah. from here. I, Where's the <laughs> AOE controller I was, damage? <laughs> I was, I, I was, uh, I had a drink with Ninja Boogie yesterday. He was lamenting about how Jabs is the typical form. He's like, you know, Ninja Boogie's playing Rubik. Jabs says, oh, no, no, no. I want, I'm boots. I need four. And if Jabs is playing Rubik, I'm four. I need <laughs> boots. <laughs> Well, he's got Burrow Strike level 3 now, so uh, it's, hey, that's, it's okay. That's not bad. The, you take uh, that. The Spirit Vessel is a 14 minute, 35 second Spirit Vessel from Jabs. And Ice Ice Look Ice is controlling thing. the top tower. It's 6,000 gold, and it's really the same story as last game where... like It's going to be more too. Look, look yeah. at the stacks. The stacks which is prepared, like Nature's Prophet is doing it again. Dude. I don't know if this will actually go the whole one, if he can get it out. Yeah, he can. Oh this gosh. is so much money for Mushi to get. He I, actually failed his own stack of the uh, Ancients. I don't care if they win or lose this game. Mineski should never touch Nature's Prophet for the rest of this tournament. I believe it's actually Nature's Prophet that stacked all this too. So that bonus gold that pops in, Jabs is going to actually get even more cash on top of what he's already managed to create in the space he's managed to get. But everyone's involved. The experience gets split. Do they smoke now? Maybe? They, uh, yeah. I don't know if they need to, because mm -hmm. I don't know if you really want to fight until you got that Blink Dagger over on Moon, because then yep. you got his jump in. You don't yep. have that from Ninja Boogie. That's, that's the that's the weakness of the Mineski drop. You can bring Jabs and you can walk him across the hit, uh, across the map with TP. Uh, ice, 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 for a time, it. tanks everything. Yeah. And yeah, just run at the fights when Optic oblige, because yep. you don't have that jump to initiate. Exactly. You, you want to respond to Optic for now until you get those core items, as you said. Yeah. Zai. They, they found Zai. Yeah, anyone got detection? Anyone bring a sentry? Oh. Yeah, someone brought a Burrow Strike. Ninja Boogie, greatest spell stealer of all time. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there's a Shadow Blade on CCNC, so Optic's timing is about right now. But again, like I said, he has three points in tree grab, so he can't actually solo kill people that easily. Mm -hmm. He will kill the Rubik, but that's pretty much it. PBD was able to steal the Invis rune, get a split Earth out. How much damage have they got? Enough. PBD will claim that one with the Edict. Even though Luna burned the Eclipse to get that yep. kill. And, and this is something we were talking about in the pregame. If you look at the warding Optic has just put down, it's 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 a ward duo, right? These wards work in conjunction to control the entire Mineski Woods. So they see the top lane, the shrine, and then this area uh, near the mid tower as well. They can play around this vision, but only if they're able to stay on Mineski's side of the map, which is going to prove very difficult the moment the blink, which is up now, on the DK becomes a threat. Yeah. <laughs> just like, and that, okay. that's... Yeah. Just, just for a status update for Mushi, we we're watching him farming up all the stacks. So we completed the Yasha. He is now uh, 1,300 away from a full BKB. Yep. And and the thing about last game is, once again, no real physical damage well, on Optic. They're going again on Ice Ice Ice. Remember, he's got that borrowed time. He doesn't care. Moon, Blink Daggers in with the Breathe Fire. Catching on three. He can be tossed around. And actually, DK copying so much damage. They have to retreat back underneath the Tier 1 tower. Ninja Boogie hiding in the stairs. Still Mushi. creates space, but the shield from Ice 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 at bottom time. 33 wants to get everybody out of this one, but he can't even do it. It won't complete. Three down. Pike has TP. It will at least be successful. But the Latrak, not so lucky. Homing missile was locked on an optic loose yeah. four on the top <laughs> and this is escalating very minuscule how, how did our entire panel back optic gaming after <laughs> watching that first game it's the jack curse man That's, yeah. <laughs> they're on fire and it's the same it's the same game optic doesn't have any physical damage and Mineski has hell of a lot more sustain. They're rushing the Spirit Vessel. They get the Medallion up. They have the Abaddon. And Optic doesn't really have the ability to take longer fights because once they use their, their spells, they all get one. Then mm -hmm. they got to wait and reload. If you don't kill that DK, you don't kill that Abaddon. 
You're just going to get chased down when you're when you're weak yep. and harmless. And they try to kill both. Like they started off with the Abad, and then DK presented himself with Moon's initiation. And at that point, I'm like, oh, he's actually going to be in trouble. He dropped down to 15%. Uh -huh. But then shields, defense, and another kill. The Nature's Prophet, yep. great steel jabs. Uh, I mean, secure. Yep. Secure. He secured I that kill. Love this one. Here word. you go again. Let's, uh, oh. let's watch this top fight. So yep. they start with Ice Ice Ice, yep. the and then Moon jumps down. in. Yep. And they use the whole first wave. So now they only have the, D the, the Sand King stun. All of a sudden, the lift to save. They can't finish off the Dragonite. He's now shielded. And they're like, oh, wait, shit. Nobody died. <laughs> well, I don't we feel went for Dragonite like about it. It's like they did no more damage as well. Like, I suppose they got hit by the brute fire, so there's even more negation yep. of the damage. So, like, what are you meant to do in this situation if you're Optic? Exactly. And oh, you... it goes from fight to fight. So, yeah, bike and nails, you know you're in trouble. But Optic, they yep. are smoked up looking to go on bottom lane, and Maneski are coming to oblige yep. them. And Maybe all... not so much with Moon stuck on a hill. You also have Rubik running around with two points Snowfield, a bonus 14% magic resist to his team, or offensive once they get the blood in them. But... Their team fight's insane. They have BKB on Gyrocopter. There is no way Optic can take a team fight right now at all. Like they, they need but to they even slow this like game they're down. They look like they're ready for one. Like like Pika's keeping the magic wand in his backpack. <laughs> he just, he's, he's got TP scroll ready to get the hell out of there. Not even like okay, we're having a fight. I need charges. Oh, what a smoke! I love this. They they let the tiny know. Hey, you see us? Or we see you, they smoke away immediately. Look at the line drawn. Perfect, because Optic knows, oh shit, they saw Tiny. We can't actually take this fight. So Let's flood to the other area of the map. Mineski's, we know where they're going. They're going to hunt them down. And they have perfect vision set up. They have their own warding duo, one on the shrine that also sees the lane, and this other one on the ancient high ground. And they're going to just find somebody. They found 33. Pulling forward, Ninja Buki. He stole the Firestorm. And here comes Jabs as well. Starts his TP. CCNC is looking into the back lines. Gets a swing with oh, the homing missile. Was already out from Mushi. He was ready to connect onto the tiny and he'll fall too how does optic just end up in these positions it's all of Mineski's making oh, that's something a lot of people don't plan around once the target the rocket on dies it switches to the nearest target all of a sudden cc and c is taking a bazooka to the face and now they just walk into roche two cores down it's two to 17. yeah and this yeah. is one of those games i think it might be more likely we get a 32 to 2 before we see a 3 to 22 <laughs> to get the optimal score going. Oh, they jump in. Oh, is it, it was a YOLO attempt from Zai. He gave it a crack. He thought potentially with the Burrow Strike they could actually steal Roshan, but it is secured. Dyer. They have both the Aegis Immortal and Ice 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 as well as the kill on Roshan. And he is 200 gold away from that Radiance and. Uh, again, another great ward placed under the duration of the smoke right below the top shrine. You can look at the map control Mineski has. They can, the, this area is now dead to optic. They have total dominance. And as long as this lane is pushed, Mineski can just control their own woods and prevent optic from mirroring the map as they now move to rotate and play bottom, clear that tower out, and then look to pressure high ground once they get all their core items up. Yeah, there's only two more of these tier two towers up. It kind of feels like the way the game is going, I'm expecting Mineski to be assaulting high ground, but you've got to have a reality check we're only 21 and a half minutes into this game. They've been focusing more on the fights, on the rotations, on keeping the core heroes of Optic down, that even with a lineup as good as this as pushing down buildings, they haven't even been focusing that at all. Now you get the Radiance for Ice 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 into the fight. Oh, it's just... I don't know how you're meant to hit anything. I don't know how this is meant to work. You need a BKB on the Luna. She's looking to buy one, but... 2200 into it is still not enough, and Pycat in the trees wanted to work with CC and C, but, but there is the, nothing to be gained here. There's an Abaddon there. I mean, what do you what do you do? And <laughs> you back off, and then you fall underneath the Dire Vision. That's what you're oh, actually doing. Oh. oh, they got the tiny. He was TPing out. He didn't want anything to do with this. Oh, it that, wasn't meant to be like this. I, over under Toby, 90 seconds to the TG. Oh, over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say over because Optic will fight to their last breath. They still have some slowdown for this push on top, on bottom. You've got the Firestorm, you've got, got the four points in Lightning. This can clean up the way, but Ice 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 is the main man to the front lines. They don't even, they, actually, they feel so intimidated to move in closer to this. Zai, I suppose he doesn't even have yeah, Blink Tank again. You can't get him in close, he can borrow a strike forward, but will die almost instantly the second he does. There's your buyback in from CC and C. Firestorm will begin. That's a great pit holding him back, but it doesn't matter. Ice 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 with the Aegis, he just stands his ground. He continues to burn them with the Radiance. You can keep the tosses going now. Borrow time it will oh. wear off. Zai with the borrow strike forward. The shield gave a little bit more time for the abandon. Now oh. we'll time out for the jump forward from Maneski with the call down. 
they have just destroyed this bottom lane, pitched a flag, and maybe you're right, Kyle, maybe it will be in 90 seconds, because at this rate, Maneski, they're winning the game. They're slowed down, however, by the mid, and that's what they're backing up I mean, to take right now. They might not call GG, Toby, but, I mean, <laughs> PyCat wasn't even there. He said, I'm going to just chill up top. I don't have a BKB. I can't do anything. And Maneski just, that's exactly how you play it. The perfect BKB from Mushi to get the Sand King stun. He just hits the racks with Flack on and realizes, wait, everybody's dying. Let me throw out my ult. DK blinks oh, in, finishes off a Ninja couple Ninja Boogie. This all started with Zytron delayed the mid lane by just going into the Sandstorm. Yep. And uh, the no cast time from Ninja Boogie was mm -hmm. almost on point, but it forced him out to get into the dust to get the pickup. They don't get the kill, but it's okay. It's still great play. Yep. And it's just... It's got Glimmer Cape now on Ninja Boogie. Yep. They're getting more and more save, save items. And it's just such a clean game from them. The way they're fighting, the way they're warding, they're moving fast around the map, and a, a lot of it is this profit. Jabs has played unbelievably well, crushing the bottom lane, killing the courier, TPing to rotate towards top, stacking Ancients in the meantime, and he's even blocking this easy camp on Radiant for four <laughs> minutes. Like, guys, Unreal, if you give Maneski Furion again, like, I better see some memes because Man, I, you, you gotta, like, what, what are you watching? It's, it's not even just that. It's the Sinchi and with the item builds they're, they're going for. Like, I remember when Mineski was kind of like the one where at the, at every single panel was talking about the item builds, mm -hmm. the hero picks that came up. Mineski was always under siege for this, especially with, like, Mansa, Lincoln, Spear, Mushi, never forget. Like, these things were always yes. problematic. Now, like, with <laughs> Mushi on this gyrocopter, the BKB SMY, everything is very simple, and everybody else in Mineski is right on the mm -hmm. money for this game. I don't think they're really giving Optic an opportunity either. It's a very clean, crisp game. Yep. And if you look, they, they smoke, and they're just going to go. Yeah, Moon in through the rear. Another three-man free fire. Lashrak gets to lead it with the BKBs. Maneski are unstoppable, entering the mid lane. Underlord can buy back. They won't have the Lashrak. They won't have the mid racks pretty soon. They want to go again. But no Pit of Malice available. There's another jump from Moon, another quick breathe fire. CC and C, this 25% reduction, wow. even with the damage he can do, he can't do it. There goes more kills. Nice Pit, Luna, this is your time. Pycat with that BKB, he took time to farm all of this up, but it's just not enough. This is the game. He can't get any kills. He's standing with five heroes there, and good game, well played. All heroes from Optic will be pushing up the daisy when the call comes out. 228. Maneski will 2-0 this quarterfinal in the winner's bracket where they will face off potentially against their SEA counterparts. TNC vs VG Gaming will be their opponents in the next round. I mean, I just, they outclassed them. They look like they were on a totally different level. Like this was a tier one versus a tier two team. Not even tier two, they, they crushed them. Yep, this and is this is so rough as well for Optic. Like they had to be sitting there going, yep. like, okay, game, game one. What the hell happened? Like, if you're sitting there, like, like you were, like, you're sitting there going, we feel confident in the draft. The draft looks really good. Oh, crap, we didn't expect this. And then did we expect Mineski in, to in total in this entire series? I mean, I respect, I love watching games like this because this wasn't even Optic playing poorly. It was Mineski, just Mineski good. Mineski took the pace of the game, they controlled the tempo, and they never let go of the momentum they developed even in, in the first two minutes of the first game. Yeah. So this wasn't a case of, like, one team just losing. Maneski just shit on them. <laughs> and they just, like, you, you knew, after taking a lot of laxatives, like, they never slowed down. They just kept piling it on. All right, so Explosive Diarrhea is the name of that game. I cannot wait for more games to come as well as to put a cork in it. Sorry to the younger viewers uh, tuned in right now. Uh, that was a very, very thorough victory from Mineski, is what Kyle was saying there. I just thought I'd translate that into English. Uh, I'm sure our panel members would agree as well. Fantastic <laughs> victory for, for Mineski in that game. Well, right from the start, all the lanes again. Jabs on the Prophet, securing his team. Yep. The lane advantage once again. Like uh, To me, both games, he's been like the, the key player. Both games MVP. Yep. He did, he did so much. Like, he's not only pressuring lanes. Like, Kyle was pointing out, he's pressuring lanes. He's stacking camps. He's doing everything for this team. Like, he's playing phenomenally. This is the jabs that I saw in pre-December when he was just on fire. Like, playing clockworks and stuff. Just flawless execution and all of them. Just... Yeah, MVP for sure. But at the same yeah. time, just another great performance all round by the team. And, uh, you know, to, to paraphrase what Kyle was saying there, Optic 
they didn't look good in this game. And I, I came over and I was like, is this Optic not looking good and Maneski looking great? Actually, it's probably both, isn't it? I think yep. o o Optic tried to be too greedy with the support store. I, I think they have to choose one lane to go to. They started with Sand King at bottom with the Underlord, but the Sand King couldn't really you know, stop the Prophet from harassing the Underlord out of the lane. So he decided to walk top, but they already lost, uh, like PVD already died in, in the top lane. So it was like, uh, they are not sure where to go to and which lane to secure, and they tried to help, or they tried to help as many lanes as possible. And when that happens, usually, you don't even secure one lane. Mm. And they also, they were running an aggro tri lane. Well, it became an aggro tri lane on Optic, and their courier got sniped. When you're running an aggro lane and you don't have a courier to bring you those items to keep you at that advantage, it is very detrimental. And again, that was Jabs just, you know, making the game even even more one-sided. Yeah, I think some of the shots from the booth tell a, tell a good story, don't they, yeah. Jack? Yeah, this is, uh, this is like a deja vu game almost. We could almost just start the analysis by going back with, going over what happened in game one. Um, Again, Mineski playing the lanes very well, moving around very well. Uh, always seemed to be on point there. And for, for Optic, we talked about this before the draft as well, right? Do we just ban this Profit hero? They don't seem that prepared or well enough prepared to deal with this. I'm um, kind of looking for answers in game, but not accounting for the answers in lane as a support. And uh, that's the pressure that he was able to apply this time. And then for Mineski, it went from, oh, how's this team going to do? We haven't seen them in a while to, oh, they picked up a couple wins in the group stage against maybe the weaker teams to, yeah. oh, wow, they beat uh, Secret <laughs> and EG as well. They're second place in the group to uh, a very dominating performance today. And they seem to have figured a lot of things out uh, and gelled very quickly. So, again, the two the two SCA teams, TNC and Mineski, appear to be on fire right now in this tournament. Mm. Yeah. And... Uh potentially headed to meet each other as well, as we'll find out in the fourth series of the day. But for now, it is Mineski that celebrate a 2-0 win. They guarantee themselves a top six position mm. here as well. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, scoreboard in just a moment, which will demonstrate exactly how Mineski have dominated this second game. 7-0-17 on jabs. Yeah. And yep. I think the bigger story is 0-10 Zai, 0-2 PyCat, 0-0-0. Uh, just... Absolutely terrible game for Optic. Uh, we're going to get an interview from the main stage with uh, Mineski. Alright, so first of all, Jabs, congratulations on your very convincing win against Optic Gaming. For both games, you guys sort of like picked the same exact same draft with the only change between uh, Rubik and Vengeful Spirit. What's the idea behind these um, very similar drafts? Mm, for game one, I mean, we have a plan for game one and then we won the game one, and they didn't win our hero, and then we just use it. Why not? We already won the game one. We just use the same thing if they didn't win. They said that the first team has already chosen the first team, which is our team now, and it's very successful. And when the second team was in BP, Optic Gaming didn't win these teams. We think that our first team has already been successful. We just want to choose again, and we can win them to win them. 是的，第二场比赛相比于第一场来说，可以说是更加碾压的一个局势了。那么我们也想问一下，昨天在 PPT 的采访当中 ，PPT 说过说 NNA DOTA 是最厉害的。那么今天他们表现得非常精彩，第二盘特别是一个碾压局势，他怎么看待这样的一个 PPT 昨天说的这样一句话 ？So yesterday at the end of the series, PPT said,、uh, proudly proclaimed that NNA DOTA is the best DOTA in the world. What are your thoughts about that?、Um, for me, every region. It's the best Dota in the world, right? It depends on the patch. For me, I don't really care. China number one. Can't be that to attract fans, do you know? Come on, let's have a look. He said that he thinks that every region of Dota should be the best Dota. This depends on each player's personal ability, not a region-specific thing. And then, China number two. He said that he thinks that every region of Dota should be the best Dota. This depends on each player's personal ability, not a region-specific thing. And then, China number three. 第一名<笑>是真的很感谢 m e n e s k i 抬了我们一手，但是我们下一场比赛 VG 跟 TNC 就要打了。那么 TNC 也是东南亚非常强的一支队伍，他认为哪支队伍会获胜呢 ？So next series is、uh, VG, VG Gaming up against TNC. Which team do you think will win? 呃，我听不懂。Just kidding. 呃 ，I think probably is TNC. Yeah. 他就认为应该是 TNC 会赢。TNC 也是这个在东南亚赛区打得非常好的一支队伍。那么他们如果 TNC 赢了之后，也会迎战 Minisky 吗？他们是想亲手解决掉自己的兄弟吗？他觉得胜算有多少
So you guys, since uh, both Mineski and TNC comes from the same Southeast Asia region, um, you guys are very familiar with each other. Are you hoping that TNC will win so that you guys can finish them off personally? Mm, yeah, I hope they will win and then we can revenge them. 的确，他认为他希望天熙可以赢，这样他们后面一场可以报仇。嗯，好的，那么既然他刚刚跟我们秀了一下中文，我们就来教他念假脖子吧，好不好？他知道自己的这个ID在中文，我们会叫他假脖